What's up and welcome to Amigos. Today I'm with the one and only Chef Leo Davila. What are you gonna do for us today, man? What are you gonna show us? So today I'm gonna show you how to make our famous blue corn tortillas. We make the best corn tortilla on this planet so that you don't miss a flour tortilla. So here what we have today is we have Maseca flour. This is one of our favorite brands. And then another brand, Masa Brosa, uh, really great for our blue corn. So we're gonna show you both. We're gonna show you how to make the yellow. We're gonna show you how to make the blue. So just to start off, we have about two cups uh, of our yellow masa right here, and we're gonna pour it into this bowl. Um, and then from here, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a little bit of a well, uh, just kinda like how you do a pasta, and then salt. So with this recipe, I know a lot of people are like, what's your recipe, what's your recipe? It's all by feel. This is about two cups of masa. This right here is just our coarse kosher salt. We're gonna do two big heaping pinches, one to grow on. Then from here, we're gonna take our hot water, right? So we do lukewarm to hot water. And the reason we do that is it actually helps with the masa, it helps it set. We're gonna pour it right in the middle. So from here, this is a combination technique that I've learned over about eight or nine different videos, different techniques combining. This is what works best for me and our tortillas. One key takeaway here is you can always add, you can never take away. So go little by little if you're unsure. So now, the masa is nice and wet, I fill it, so I'm just gonna start naturally making a ball. So this ball is just naturally coming together. I really haven't done anything to it. I'm scraping off the sides, just naturally letting it form. From here, I notice that I have a lot of sandy parts left. So what I'll do is kind of regulate it with my hand, or touch more water out right onto the side. And now we're gonna let that naturally form as well. And now that I feel like everything is coming together, we're actually gonna turn it onto our workspace. So from here, as you see, you're probably thinking like, is it actually gonna to come together? It's so not kind of like pasta. With working with this masa, the last thing you wanna do is you don't wanna press. You don't wanna get in there. You just wanna naturally roll it together, kind of roll it around on your table. Make sure your work surface is clean, COVID-19 free. We're gonna let everything come together. If you feel like you need a touch more water, if you feel like it's not good enough, what I like to do is just take the tips of my fingers and we'll just dunk them in, just like that. And that's how we add a little bit more water. From here, if you try to pour, you're gonna pour way too much water on it. It's gonna waterlog it. It's gonna get super soggy mess all over the place. And what we're looking for is the consistency of wet sand, or I like to call it Play-Doh. I put it on my hand, nothing comes back. Nothing comes off of it. And that's what we're looking for. The next step, which is super, super important, is we're gonna let this guy rest. We're just gonna use the damp paper towel. We double folded it nice and tight around it. We're gonna let that rest in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. All right guys, so now we're gonna talk about the blue corn masa. This is my personal favorite. This is actually a catch the wave staple. Uh, one, I feel like blue corn has a little bit better flavor, um, but there is a lot of difference in the white yellow version versus this blue. Same thing, that nice big circular motion, working everything together. And as you notice right away, the blue masa comes together a little bit quicker for almost like a gummier state, right? And you're thinking you've lost it, but trust me, you're fine. Because I'm actually just gonna turn it out on our table again. I gotta say, this is my baby. Uh, I love this dough, I love this masa, I love this blue corn, I love this style. From here, same thing. So we got our damp paper towels, wrap it. All right guys, so now, beautiful, right? They've rested, we have them portioned out how we need them to. Um, now the rolling stage. So if you wanna be old school, by all means, grab yourself a rolling pin, go to town, save a little bit of that masa, roll them out. That's great, right? But we're smarter, not harder. Then there's this one, this is an aluminum press. Affordable, 10, $15 at your local HEV, Walmart, whatever. Once again, very economic option. Not the best. Cast iron or wooden? This is my baby right here. My Castaway team actually surprised me for Christmas. Got me this beautiful one. As you can see, does not come included with a, uh, a Ziploc bag, but a Ziploc bag or parchment paper works really good when pressing, so it prevents it from sticking. So, next step. 
I prefer a Ziploc bag. That's just what I prefer. Uh, we're gonna start with our blue corn. And then same thing. So we took the mound. We're gonna press it just a little bit off center to the left, and you'll see why in a second. I'll close the Ziploc bag, gently press it down, and then once again, we'll let the object do all the work. And there it is. If we want ours a little thinner, I typically like mine just a touch thinner. I'll go one more press on it, and boom, we're good to go. From here, this is why we have this extra parchment paper ready with our sheet tray. It's really, really important to have some sheet tray so it doesn't stick. And all I do is I lay them out and we'll go on to the next one. Hey Leo, what are we going to eat with these corn tortillas? The best thing that goes into corn tortilla is barbacoa. So from Brani Farms, we have some beef cheeks right here. We can't wait to put them in our tacos. Now how to make this barbacoa, that's for our next episode. The food's ready. I'm not staying out of the shop now. <laughs> man, you guys, y'all don't understand what Leo does when he's here in the kitchen, man. This is his element. I'm gonna shut up, it's time to eat. Got some homemade salsa? Absolutely, so we got our homemade salsa verde. We're gonna go right on top. So I uh, do cilantro and onions, and Leo prefers cooked onions, and- um, Or pickled, pickled well, red. You'll see pickled red on all of our food. Oh, that's right, pickled red. All right, so I'm gonna, so I've eaten your blue corn so many times, I'm going to go straight for the white yeah. corn. Right here. Can't get enough of our blue corn. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, man. One thing about corn is whether you like it thick or thin, when you're making them, you control that. So it's literally how you like it. Absolutely. I mean, guys, look at that. I'm dripping Manteca everywhere. <laughs> Again, I'm in awe. Leo, man, thanks again, bro. Appreciate it. Thanks for sharing with us. Absolutely. And how to cook green hatch chili barbacoa and regular barbacoa is coming. It's coming. But it's going to be a nice little twist surprise. So can't wait for it. Eat Migos, as always. Thanks for watching. Love, peace, and tacos. We love you. God bless. And uh, we'll see you next time. Take it easy. The Eat Migos know just where to go.